Hey, Bellator Nation. Follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. From the gym to the streets, Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. From the front lines to the Bellator cage, no one has been more battle-tested than Yaroslav Amasov. One year ago, the welterweight world champion traded his gloves for guns to help defend his homeland of Ukraine. Today, that conflict continues as his country fights on. But Amasov, with the urging of his fellow soldiers, has come back to defend his world title and the sport's best 26-fight unbeaten streak. On his return, he faces a familiar foe, one who nearly snapped the streak back in 2020, Logan Storm Storley. During the champion's absence, Storley earned an interim belt by defeating the elusive and electric Michael Venom Page. Logan Storm Storley! Storley's dominant wrestling has put him in prime position to claim the welterweight throne. But to do so, he must conquer Amasov, the only man to beat him. Dynamo! Amasov! Amasov's narrow split decision victory has left Storley fueled by one goal, redemption. You know, I'm not just a wrestler. That first fight, I was just a wrestler. And this fight, you know, I'm a complete fighter. For me, it, that's, this is the one I wanted. This is the one that means the most. So now, the stage is set for two of Bellator's best to settle the score. And when it's all over, only one man will be draped in gold. Logan have belt, I have belt. When we fight, we have only one real champion. From Dublin, Ireland, it's Yaroslav Amasov versus Logan Storley in a highly anticipated rematch for the world title. Bottom line, it's time to find out who the best welterweight in the world really is. of the spectacular city of Dublin, Ireland, the serenity of the Hayperty Bridge in direct contrast with what is quickly becoming the centerpiece of European MMA, the Three Arena, where once inside, as you are now, you'll meet the raucous crowd that has become legend themselves. Yeah, so good, so good. But tonight, even they take a back seat to one of the most compelling stories in all of sport. Now, finally, take center stage. One man who answered the call of his sport and the other who answered the call of his country. Tonight we get the answer we've been waiting for. Which one of the men's tonight is the undisputed welterweight world champion? Goosebumps already. It is great to see you. I'm Sean Grandy. It is every fighter's dream to become the world champion. Why? Think of the enormity. Champion of the whole wide world. But the world has never been smaller. It's delivered instantly to our homes and our tablets and our phones. Maybe that's why this story has touched so many people. For nine years, Yaroslav Amasov, for 25 fights and 25 wins, chased to be around the world to become the champion of it. Until he finally did. He made his dream come true. But as he sat on top of the world, his own world crumbled. And instead of defending a world title, he returned home to Ukraine to defend his home country. He returns to the Bellator cage. Amazing atmosphere, topped only by this amazing.
story, John. You have seen everything there is to see in this sport. You were a midwife at its birth, yet we have never seen anything like this. No, and you take a look, you know, this is sport. And sport is important because it gives a relief from what's happening in the real world at the time about what Yaroslav Amazov did. He took his family, he drove 36 hours to put them in a position to be safe, and then drove 36 hours back to put himself in a position of danger because he joined right away to try to protect his country from a foreign invader. But his own soldiers are the reason he's back. His own soldiers are the ones that told him, we get more out of seeing you be victorious in what you do. That gives us more strength, more morale boost. We want you to go back. He finally did, and now we're here. The story that has dominated the headlines, and rightly so, dominated the fight, which without the sidebar story, we'd be talking about as a spectacular rematch because the only loss these two fighters have is the one Amasov put on Storley a couple of years back. Look at 41 fights. We have 40 victories out of these two guys. And Logan Storley has done nothing but be almost perfect. He has been fantastic. His wrestling has translated to MMA so well. And this is, this is mixed martial arts. You'll see people that go, well, I don't like he wrestles too much. Then stop him, and they can't. Yaroslav Amazov is the only guy that has stopped his wrestling, and this time Logan Storley says that ain't gonna happen. And by the way, that is just the main event of what is gonna be a spectacular night here in Dublin. We've got a lot of business to take care of before we get there, including a co-main event that is gonna be very important in the rankings as Pedro Carvalho and Jeremy Kennedy will like to determine who the number one contender is for Patricio Pitbull's title. The three arena going to come unglued, as always, when Peter Quigley makes another legendary walk to the cage here in Dublin, trying to climb the ladder one more time at lightweight as he takes on Bryce Logan. Now, one of Ireland's favorite daughters, Sinead Cavanaugh, has her eye on another shot at the world title, but she has a piece of unfinished business, a blood stoppage lost three plus years ago to Janae Harding, and they will finally settle once and for all. But it begins with one of Europe's top prospects, Kieran Clark, looking to stay undefeated. Our first look at him and our first look at what is going to be a partisan crowd playing their part as they will all day and all night here in Dublin. Now we welcome to the cage Leonardo's Pitbull Cine. Leonardo Sinis, considered by many, John, to be the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter in all of Greece, which is a little like being the best hockey player in Hawaii. <laughs> but someone has to come first, and John, this could be a tricky late change for Kerry Clark. This is a tricky late change because the, the opponent himself, I am telling you, Sinise is a guy very tough, does not stop. He's got a very good submission game. Does he have the game that can stop Kieran Clark? That's the question, but there's no doubt he's not going to give in. And now, to make his way, Kirho Mr. Kieran Clark with a curveball or a late opponent change or a catch weight. Good luck as he has simply been through too much at an impossibly young age. When he and his brother were teenagers, they didn't have driver's licenses or a car for that matter. They had to figure out how to navigate the 45 miles to Dublin and SPG. But they found a way. They studied at the feet of the master. And boy, Kieran Clark is rising like a meteor these days. Well, the thing about Kieran Clark that is so special is you look at that 6 0 record and you think, okay, young fighter, and he is, but he's got a ton of experience because he has over 25 amateur fights because he was learning back then, and he didn't make the move to professional until he was ready, and he's proved with this 6-0 record, he is absolutely ready. 
He has been fantastic, and it has been the ground that has been his sweet spot. He gets your back, and he is going after a series that he has in store. The choke will happen. He'll go palm to palm. He'll go rear naked. He goes after all kinds of chokes from all positions because at this point, his ground game is that good. A slow starter, but he finishes strong. Let's check out the tail of the tape in the opener. Normally, this would be a featherweight matchup, and that's why the weights are shown, because, because of the late draw of Sinise, 146.4 and 148.8 for Leonardo's. Another unforgettable Bellator Dublin has arrived on a night that ends with an undisputed world champion. Begins, as always, with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Three Arena for Bellator MMA Live on Showtime. Tonight from Dublin, Ireland, we extend a special welcome to the brave men and women serving around the world and joining us on AFN, the American Forces Network. And now, Bellator 291 gets underway with a 149-pound contract weight fight set for three five-minute rounds introducing the blue corner at five foot eight weighing in 148.8 pound in his bellator debut he brings 11 professional victories five losses one draw from thessaloniki greece presenting leonardo's pitbull And across the cage, his adversary, fighting out of the red corner at 5'8", weighing in 146.4 pounds. He's undefeated as a professional. Six victories, no losses from draw in the county, Lord Ireland, introducing Kirhan. If they sang Sweet Caroline at the Coliseum, the rings, this the is what it would be like. In charge, <laughs> Brian Miner. And these are the unified rules. Brian Miner will be officiating. You know anything about these? Or? A little uh, bit. We go off the 10-point must and That means that the winner will be awarded 10 points to the opponent, 9 points or less. That is based upon effective striking, grappling, meaning that whichever one took place the most, that's what they're looking for, and damage. Then it goes to aggressiveness and cage control. Our Feature bouts are all three five-minute rounds with our championship bout being five five-minute rounds. You know, people will make up their own rules on social media anyway, so it doesn't matter. This how is you true. <laughs> now, Sinise with all the experience, but he clearly struggled trying to make the lower weight. It was pretty obvious when we saw him yesterday. Well, he came in with a week and a half notice yep. because the original opponent dropped out, so when you get into that contracted weight, the fact that he was, you know, working towards getting it, I give him all the credit in the world. Now, keep in mind, Kieran Clark has been criticized for some slow starts. He's gotten dropped in first rounds. So that is a point of emphasis here to get a better start. This is the place that Kieran Clark feels very comfortable. If he is on the ground. He is a happy man, and if he's in the top position, he's incredibly happy because he does damage with ground and pound, and he moves himself to better positions throughout the round and tries to go for the submissions. We talked to so many of these fighters, Peter Creeley and Karen Clark and Pedro Carvalho, about fighting in front of this crowd. It's a blessing. It can be a curse, too, if you let it get to you, because we've seen fighters, especially John, younger fighters, really feel the pressure to perform. Absolutely, but the one that I would really give credit to is Karen Clark is so used to fighting in front of a crowd, he just feeds off of it, and he builds off of it. And here in this fight, he has started much faster than we've seen him in the past. He wants to travel the world like most young fighters. He wants to fight in the U.S. But there is no substitute for this crowd. Top position, in control, and staying busy. 
And right now you're taking a look at what Sinise is doing. Nothing in any way that is going to change the position of what we have. Those shots coming up, they do land, but they don't have near the power that what Karen Clark is landing based just upon gravity. Those are nice, clean shots by Karen Clark. Sinise has been unable to change this position. This has been, this is going on two minutes now. See, right now, with, with where he's at, he should be looking to use that cage to get himself back to his feet. But that's not what we're seeing at all. What we're seeing is he's leaving his back flat on the canvas. And if you're in that position, you are not getting up. Nice knee shield inside. We'll see if he does something with it. You might see Clark passing that leg over, completing his half guard. Yeah, just a much better start than we have seen from Karen Clark. His, his numbers will indicate, again, it's the not as much the volume, but the quality of the strikes. Yeah, and see, and this is, you know, you're, well, both are striking. Yes, they are. But I'll be the top man all day long while you hit me from the bottom. No problem. Get ready for me. Cross that baby. Cross that baby. Get toes out of cage. Can't put the toes in the cage as Brian Miner calls the knees on. This is heavy hammer fist from Clark. Nice job knee on belly for a while there by Clark. Goes right back to it. Now in the right. mount. In the mount. Didn't have a lot of room to work, but he snuck that in there. Can he get the distance to drop those fists? It looks like he can. And he's doing a great job of keeping posture right here. Notice. Well, we're getting close to checkmate here. You see Sinise trying to buck the hips, but there's nowhere to go with the fence right there. That's not going to change your position. Brian Miner taking a closer look now. strikes this is where he shines look at the body triangle already in place got the figure four now he's going after the choke his fans and his coaches wanted a better first round from Karen Clark instead what they got is a dominant first round And full marks to the veteran Sinise just to survive it. Take a look. This is a beautiful change of levels, but Sinise actually put himself on the ground. Clark gets in there. Went to guard, Clark landed some good ground and pound and then decided knee on belly, switched to full mount and really beautiful posture, landed big heavy shots throughout this time on the ground. You saw Sinise moving right to the body triangle and you'll see Clark use that body triangle any chance he gets. Am I within my rights to bring up the idea of a 10-8 round there? You are, in the, and it, it is there. You're looking, but a lot of it was done in guard. Guard we look at is almost 50-50, but the guy in the top position has got the more power. That last bit is getting close to it. I just didn't quite give it. You've always been so strict. <laughs> like a lot of fighters particularly in Europe having a difficult time staying active during COVID fourth fight in the last five years Ooh, nice oh nice that's great beautiful left hand by Karen Clark right to right mount. into mount 30 seconds into the round nice job by Sinise yeah to get out of it
Three straight finishes for Karen Clark in the 6-0 start. Dynamic change with the late opponent change. And he knows finishes are what people are hungry for. And Sinise, in a 11-year career, has only been stopped twice. Sinise working real hard right now, but cannot stay in this position right here. You've got to say, I've got to move, because really, he's mounted. It's just low mount. The legs are pressed together. It's just that Kieran has his weight far back. He's not sitting more towards the, the diaphragm and chest area. He's got all of his weight back controlling the legs. And this is a great example of what we're talking about. About You could say these are 20 landed strikes from the top and 20 landed from the bottom, but that's a huge difference in real life. Exactly. Nice elbow strikes by Sinise. He's trying, but it's, it's more just arm. There's not a whole lot that's behind it. By the way, if I said the name Jessica Kozumi, do you know who that is? Probably not, right? I do not. She's the best hockey player ever from Hawaii. Huh. Just want to make sure before we get before we get tweets. Okay. I don't know where you came up with that one, but you just proved yourself right. I had a long flight. <laughs> Kevin McDonald's and I. And Clark still working. He hasn't been satisfied with the position. And he's doing a great job of working yeah. the body also. Right here, he's lacing the arm. Knows he's got that right arm trapped now. Very smart as he's to try to grab that left arm. Unable to hold it. Kieran still has that right arm. Goes back to doubling it up. Now he's got it in place. Oh, that one got through. Remember, again, the reason I brought up the weight cut and the difficulty that Sinise had is that fatigue has to be a factor here at some point, especially when you've been on the bottom for nine out of ten minutes. He's been working very hard to try to get the weight of Karen Clark off him, but it's not happened. Karen having too much technique. And you saw how he changed from being in the mount position in the first round where he was at. He decided, I'm going to go back. I'm going to leg ride a lot of this and keep myself heavy so his legs can't be used. Great job of passing right here. He's trying to grab the head. It's not going to do anything. Karen Clark just in complete control right now. There you go. Pressing that leg down. More like a three-quarter mount. Well, Sinise has just been caught in the rain without an umbrella, and he takes a couple more big shots here. He's taken a lot. He has been one of the one thing out of watching his fights. The guy has no quit in him. He will continue to take shots. He is not in any way going to ever just give in. You've got to stop him. Nice short elbow strike. Again, now the numbers piling up, and remember the majority of those coming from this exact spot, like that. And those are heavy, and your head's not being able to move anywhere when it's landing. Solid shots landed by Karen Clark. South position finishing round two. He's been a third round finisher, and that's where we're headed. Again, you take a look at this round. Just simply domination by Clark. He goes for the takedown. Sinise thinks that he's going to come out on top. You see him try to turn towards him. Clark already has a leg in position. He's already putting weight. Sinise cannot turn that corner on him. And Clark ends up where he is just hammering shots. 
on Sinise. Big elbows. Nine minutes of ground control in the 10 minutes, as we told you. What's, what's impressive to me, John, is that Kieran Clark here, these aren't wild young guy attacks. He stayed aggressive, but he hasn't been out of control here. No, no, he's been very reserved as far as he's been picking his shots, doing damage, not letting Sinise turn that, you know, position around on him. Smart fighting. That's why he's ahead easily 2-0. Nice has won his fights by submission. He is not a knockout fighter. And he hasn't been in any kind of position on the ground to do any kind of work. It's been all defense. Oh, all right. Clark almost got right, okay. You good? You sure? All right. Time in. Come on. Here's where Karen Clark doesn't want to stop. All right, a nice change of level. Well, the single brings it back side. Nice job by Kieran Clark. Runs the pipe, the pipe to the back side, brings him down. We're going to see if he tries to actually pass this guard. In all three rounds, Kieran Clark has scored the takedown very early. Good job by Sinise, put him back from half guard into full guard. But there's nothing that Sinise is doing that's going to change the flow of where this fight is directed. All these little shots are not going to do any type of damage to Karen Clark to stop what he's able to do back. All the work that Karen Clark has put in has been on display. Nice job of trying to knee shield by Sinise when he comes up. That's why Clark comes back down on him. A less experienced fighter would have been finished a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you know, in watching all of his fights, one thing I know, I said all the time, one thing I wrote down, super durable. Yep. Just keeps on fighting, doesn't stop. You know, doesn't get affected by things, and that's really impressive as far as he's tough. And that's not the worst thing for Kieran Clark either to get in there with a veteran that doesn't have that quit. You got you got to go through these types of fights where you have an opponent that you keep on just grinding on him and you know you know how miserable it is and they just don't stop. We talked about this earlier with AJ McKee getting specific fights that were important for him in his undefeated rise that some were tough fights particularly yeah. here in this building. And that's exactly what you're seeing right now for Kieran Clark. He, he's going to end up being 7-0 here if this continues this way. But these are the type of fights that you need to have. You need to have those ones that, you know, you had to dig dig down and, you know, guy doesn't quit, so you just keep on doing what you're doing. You're being successful with it, just go keep doing it. 12 minutes of ground control, and we are not yet at the 14-minute mark. In some ways, you ask yourself, what's more impressive against a veteran, a 30-second win or 15 minutes of pure dominance? <laughs> you know, and it, it, it has been pure dominance. I'm kind of, you know, wondering if any of the judges have given any of these rounds 
because Karen Clark has just dominated position. Hasn't really done damage. And that's what you're really looking for. I want to see damage to say that I'm going to give that 10-8 round. But I, I bet you there's one in there. I, do, I agree with you. I think there will be. There's going to be a 26 on one of these scorecards. You wanted to see improvement, and instead you saw dominance from Kieran Clark. And I mean start to finish. That's undoubtedly Kieran Clark thanking him for taking the fight yep. on short notice. That's a tough spot to walk into, man. Walking into the Coliseum to take on a lion. And a young lion. the name if you don't know it Karen Clark 7 and 0 goes the distance for the third time a tough veteran made him work and full marks for the veteran Leandro Sinise a tough fight to take on short notice and an even tougher 15 rounds to fight through. So will there be any 26s on the scorecards? That's the question. Michael C. Williams about to give us the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Eric Colon, Ben Cartledge, Sal D'Amato, all have it exactly the same at 30 to 26. All for the winner by unanimous decision. Kira! Probably round one that got the 10 8s on all the cards, but any way you score it, that young man is 7-0, Kieran Clark with Big John McCarthy. I'm here with Kieran Clark. Kieran, that was a dominant performance from the first round all the way through the second and third. You probably had about 14 minutes of control time being in the top position throughout that fight. Yeah, look, I was um, looking to go up and actually even having a chat to you. Uh, they come with their interview and uh, yeah, just to be patient. And I knew going to mount and, you know, attaching to him, he'd be able to bridge and roll. And I was looking into that, he was good at that. And I always see in the last rounds, lads were kind of breaking. But as we know, uh, my third round is always the best. So uh, I thought I was uh, holding on to the hope of that, you know. How important is that type of fight? For you moving on now seven and oh you got to have those tough fights yeah big time like he 20 pro fights nearly and uh look i'm always taking uh jude john i'll tell you i'm always saying yes that's probably it's probably they're always telling me uh, yeah that's when i'm getting these tough fights but i'm here in battle tonight take the, uh, the the tough fights and uh yeah who is it you should be fighting next i really don't know look the way it is um i'm just i'm seven wins of battle in a row now um that's some of the most consecutive in the company um, look, I'm just looking to keep improving, keep winning, and uh, we'll see where it goes from now. 7-0 and oh in this cage. Ladies and gentlemen, get up on your feet. Give it up for Kieran Clark. And he knows the stats. The time for the third longest win streak in Bellator. One of the other guys who are 7-0 and oh in Bellator, Yaroslav Amosov, who will fight in the main event as we crown an undisputed welterweight world champion. Meanwhile, on March 10th, we'll probably find out his first challenger. For more on that, I mean... Hey, we finally got Amanda Guerra in double, and that means the party is on. Yeah, absolutely, Sean. I have a bunch of new friends here behind me. 
Uh, we're going to see Sinead Kavanaugh fight later. I want to mention these two lovely ladies are her sisters. They're so excited to see her fight tonight. You mentioned the title fight tonight, Yaroslav Amasov making his return to the cage. We're going to talk so much about that coming up. But first, what is coming up here at Bellator? We have one incredible tournament ending, one beginning, and a bunch of title fights on the line. The Bellator Hit Parade keeps on rolling on March 10th from the SAP Center in San Jose, California. The lightweight World Grand Prix gets underway. It's undefeated champion Usman Nurmagomedov battling MMA icon Benson Henderson and Tofik Mosayev versus Alexander Shabli in the tournament's opening round. Plus, the one and only MVP is back against Goichi Yamauchi. March 31st from Pachanga Resort in Temecula, California. Daniel James and Marcelo Gohm go head-to-head -head in the heavyweight main event. Plus, Kat Zingano faces Lima Court in women's featherweight action. Bellator says aloha with a world championship doubleheader in Honolulu. Friday, April 21st, flyweight champ Liz Carmouche defends her belt against number four ranked Deanna Bennett. Then Saturday, April 22nd, it's the conclusion of the Bantamweight World Grand Prix featuring interim champion Rafion Stotts against number two ranked Patchy Mix in the tournament final. They'll battle for $1 million. And it's a Hawaiian homecoming for Alima Leigh McFarlane when the former world champion takes on Kana Watanabe in a featherweight matchup. And on May 12th, Bellator returns to the City of Light when former world champion and top-ranked Gegar Mousasi fights number two Fabian Edwards in a middleweight clash. Plus, former champion Brent Primus draws France's own Mansour Barnaoui in a lightweight World Grand Prix quarterfinal matchup. Bellator MMA, where warriors rule. So much coming up here at Bellator. We cannot wait to be there with you starting March 10th in San Jose. But let's continue the party here at Bellator 290 in two women who are ready to let their fists fly. Of course, we are talking about Sinead Kavanaugh and Janae Harding. This is a rematch of their first fight four years ago where Harding won, but because Sinead Kavanaugh had a nasty cut and the doctor stopped the fight. Fast forward to now, though, it has been an aggressive and adventurous road for each of these women. I want to talk about Sinead Kavanaugh first. She is from Dublin, and one year ago tonight in this arena, she tore both her ACL and MCL. Even though they were torn, she managed to beat Liam McCourt there. You see her coach and a smiling Conor McGregor who had to carry her out of the arena. She spent the past year working to get back to this spot. She's been very honest. It has been very mentally grueling for her, but she is excited to get back in the cage. As for Janae Harding, she is putting a ton of pressure on herself in this one to prove she can stand with the best. She is coming off back-to-back -back losses, but she told us, because I won that first fight four years ago, I do think I have the edge in this one. It is going to be an incredible fight. Sean, let's send it back to you. Yeah, man, the amazing pictures. The life of a fighter, man. Sinead Kavanaugh has had to overcome obstacles in Bellator her entire life. She's had to overcome, try to overcome the world champion, Chris Cyborg, whom she finds for a rematch, the ECL, which you saw in that pebble in her shoe that only stoppage loss very much against her will against Janae Hardy. Set now to make her way to the cage, Janae Hollowpoint Hardy. What a normal party is like we turn on this shit of the team. Janae Harding likes to say that hindsight is 2020 when she reviews her career, the highs, the lows, but hindsight isn't the issue. It's her actual sight. It's one of a fighter's nightmare injuries, a detached retina. And when I asked her about it this week, John, I love this answer. She said, I won't use it as an excuse. She said, when I win the title, I'm not going to say I did it with one eye. You know, I love I love Janae Harding's attitude and stuff, but I, but I truly believe that her earlier coaching, they put her into fights that she wasn't ready for. Now, she is a very good stand-up fighter. She's got power. She's got beautiful technique. It's always been the ground that's given her some problems, and now she's been working on that with Eugene Berriman and everybody at City Kickboxing. She is sparring with Dan the Hook, hook Man Hooker, who is just a mean dog. And she says, if I can spar with him and last through that, this fight's easy. And ready now to make her way, Sinead 
Trust in this sport can be tough to come by, but it's critical. And you got to trust your coaches, trust your team, but most of all, you have to be able to trust your body. Janae Cavanaugh's betrayed her last year, just saw those injuries, torn ACL and MCL, but she has had to fight her way back. What did she ever the last time we saw her? Uh, Sinead Cavanaugh is just fun. She's fun to watch because she comes to brawl. In her last fight, if you're talking about Lee McCourt, that was a gutsy performance, one that was just amazing because she blew out her entire knee. And she is a stand-up fighter, and she went to the ground, and she won that fight by winning it on the ground. You can see she goes after Lee McCorp, but watch, you're gonna see that she loses that position. That knee was gone, it was just blown out. She had no ability to stand, so let's go to the ground. I'll keep on fighting, I'm not gonna stop. She got that win and showed what kind of heart and determination she has. She is a gamer. We check out the tail of the tape as these featherweights keep beating each other, and that's why you see these records look the way they look. That is so true. And if you're looking at this, Janae Harding has got that reach advantage, but did a lot of damage in the clinch with elbows in their first fight. We'll see if Sinead can stop that from happening again. Bellator MMA welcomes those joining us tonight on BBC iPlayer and on Virgin Media here in Ireland as we move now to the featherweight division scheduled for three five-minute rounds live on Showtime. We introduce the blue corner at five foot nine, weighing in 145.1 pounds. Her professional record six and six. She fights out of Auckland, New Zealand, Janae Hollapoint Hardy. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot seven, weighing in 146 pounds. The former title challenger now ranked at number three tonight returns to the cage with eight professional victories, five defeats from Dublin, Ireland. Introducing Sinead Cahill. In charge, your referee Kevin McDonald. We talk about all the obstacles that Sinead Kavanaugh has fought through to be here. And think about this and the courage it takes. This is all to get back in the cage with Chris Cyborg. <laughs> so That's true. the reward. That's, That's a the reward. Prize. Yeah. That's, the That's a good prize. Now, the first fight ended on the blood stoppage as Janae Harding was just throwing these really damaging elbows. When Amanda talks about how some people didn't think that fight should be stopped, some people is John McCarthy. That would be me because you know, I'm going to be honest. You, you look at a cut and it's the placement of the cut and how bad is the cut. In my opinion, that cut was stopped because we had a doctor who was new to the sport watching women fight, and women fighting is no different than men fighting. You give them the same leeway, the same effects. You do everything the same for them that you do for the men. And, and I, that, in that fight, I don't think it was done. Nice job by us today in that exchange. We talked about city kickboxing. Any of the top fighters in the world down there right now? Or? Uh, I think they have a couple, yeah. <laughs> you know, Eugene's Berriman. down there. And, and it's, it's one of the great things about Janae Harding right now is she has gone back to yep. her home and back to city kickboxing with Eugene Berriman where she should have been for a while and because he's got a great system and he goes by that system and he makes people work within it. And it's obvious that that system is damn good because everyone out of his gym is a damn good fighter. Lene Harding has talked about the evolution of both fighters. It was four and a half years is a long time in the sport. She said, we were two strikers back then. Now we're two MMA fighters. Very true. Both have really just improved in not just being strikers. And you're taking a look at right now, and this is the difference in them as strikers. Janae is very technical. Look at the straight punches she throws. Janae, very tough and throws brawler type punches. She wants to knock you out with every shot she throws. She'll wing. Oh, yes. Janae 
Mike Kavanaugh was getting the better of the exchanges in that fight, and then that the elbow started, and one of them just caught Sinead Kavanaugh over that right eye, which is why I think the doctor, right or wrong, wherever you stand on it, sure, he stopped it because it was over the eye, and it was bleeding into her eye, and I think that's probably what caused the stoppage. But at the time of the stoppage, it wasn't bleeding because it had just been stopped by well, the cut man, and that's what the cut man's there for. That's the point. He didn't give the cut man a chance yes. to stop it, and that was what was significant about the stoppage. Nice job by Janae, just controlling the center of the cage. But you're seeing that Sinead is waiting for those attacks and looking for those counters. I didn't realize that there was an SPG fighter that wasn't here. <laughs> A couple. Johnny Walker just absolutely coming on fire now that he's been working out with SPG, fighting his type of fights. Looking good. It's just an, an extraordinary team environment. It's interesting talking to the different fighters about wanting to support their team, but you got to stay focused, obviously, on what you have to do. Nice clean right hand by Sinead there. It's hard to look a little bit like a different fighter to you than she looks a lot more. Comfortable. Yeah. She's the one that's controlling where the action is taking place. She's trying to come forward on Sinead. Most people cannot come forward on Sinead. She's doing a good job with that. She just needs to look for those counters when Sinead's starting to blitz her. Something that really needs to be brought out. Attacking the body by both women. Again, nice left hand. The left hand by Sinead has really been finding its mark. And you can see Sinead is attacking the body with that front teeth kick. While Sinead is attacking it with that left hook to the body right there. Today Harding has struggled on the ground, and yet it's going to take an awful lot. It seems impossible to convince Sinead Kavanaugh to fight that way. I mean, there's no way you're going to do it. Yes, yeah. yeah, she's got she to blow out her knee to, for it to happen. Yeah. I talked to her about it. I said, why are you not? You really improved so much. I just like the ball. <laughs> are you saying that fighters can be stubborn? No. Oh, That's the best shot of the round for Harding. As it comes to an end. Good first round. Knockout artist Subriel Matias wants to prove he's one of the top dogs of the super lightweight division. But Jaramais Ponce looks to stay undefeated. Matias versus Ponce on Showtime. All 18 of Matias' wins have been by stoppage. I'll say that long line of Argentinian great fighters. Oscar Bonavina, Carlos Monzon. Here you see, nice clean shot right there with the right hand by Kavanaugh. This beautiful hook to the body. And then Harding had her own times, especially with those teeth kicks. Let's go. Kavanaugh's probably making about three dollars an hour tonight when you factor in all the <laughs> all the work he's put in. It's an extraordinary roster. It feels like the half the SBG roster is in action tonight. Well, that, man, but not a single index card. Nothing. His voice is gone. I wonder if they factored that in. Let's start the round two here for Harding. Why did you give a round one? It, was, it got oh. close. That's so her best shot for Kavanaugh. And it, it really another one. one. There were a couple of really good shots by Kavanaugh, but she also had a lot of shots to the body, and those kicks uh, to the body caused her problems. It always knocked her back. So you're looking by controlling the cage and by being the one that landed the heavier shots overall. I gave it to Janae Hart.
don't know about these kicks landing or you know, how many she's putting in the bank and what Shay Kavanaugh is feeling. Is she moving as well as she was at the start of round one? So much work just to trust those knees, that knee again. This is what Shanae needs to do. She needs to force Janae to be the one that's having to move laterally, not coming forward. Make her feel uncomfortable with the pressure. Right there, you need, I need a response. I need counters by Sinead. Don't just let those moments go by. There you go. Let's go through. That's what counters will do. Sinead is hurt. Nice movement. Still coming forward. This has been a seven-minute version of what the first couple of minutes of the first fight were. Great exchanges. Kavanaugh probably getting the better of it before the cut caused by the elbows. What are you seeing by Sinead right now? She is taking a little bit of a break. She put a lot of shots on her. She's sitting back a little bit, catching her breath, and throwing what she can, but... That was why you saw that little space of time. She kind of seemed like she stopped. She just catching some air. Nice. Yep. Left clip to her, that left hook. Talk about her winging the shots in. Some blood from the mouth of Sinead Kavanaugh. Obviously, the damage starting to show on Janae Harding, too. Yeah. The right hand is starting to puff out that left eye area. You can see some swelling on Janae. Shots again. Yeah, these lefts are getting through the guard. Kavanaugh's having a lot more success in this round. Putting a lot of shots on Janae. And you're seeing a difference in the confidence. Take a look at the way this fight has now changed in the aspect of Janae Kavanaugh now moving forward. Janae trying to get some distance at times back against the cage. Just what you said, she's forcing Janae Harding now to move laterally and she can't get those front kicks. That's it. who had a huge advantage on the ground. If she was going to be stubborn and just keep it on her feet no matter what. Yeah. And it is one of the things because when you're, when you're watching Sinead and it, you talk to fighters and you say, why are you going to make yourself just a boxer? Because you can see it's really no kicks. She loves using her hands. She's a boxer-centric type of stylist. But that's what she loves to do and that's where she thinks she's going to be successful. She doesn't want to get into grappling. She can do it. But she'd rather stand here and look for the knockout. Great athletes are stubborn, almost by definition. Big round two for Sinead Kavanaugh. Big one. Big right hand, That's beautiful so left coming. hand. That's why you go with the combinations. It's always the one that they don't see coming. Again, left hand, landing, putting Janae down. She gets right back up, but these are having a cumulative effect on her. Janae having a lot of success with those shots. You can see Janae losing her balance there. Clean right hand. 
little getting a little bit too close, crushing the space a little bit too much, but fantastic round for Sinead Kavanaugh. How many times, Don, have we said over and over again about fighters, male or female, just throwing one shot and not throwing that combination? Sinead Kavanaugh just demonstrated viscerally what happens when you throw two at a time. Multiples, exactly. See, I listen to you. I know Josh doesn't. <laughs> I do. Third and five. Pretty even. But obviously, Kavanaugh's shots are much more damaging in round two. you on this I'm not completely convinced that all three judges saw the first round for Hardy no I, I it, this could definitely it was a very close round and it's a matter of what's wrong with our scoring system is obviously the round one by Sinead Kavanaugh the second was she won it way easier than what would have been if you gave her around Harding in the first so you know there's no doubt she's winning the fight but as we have scorecards and rounds it might be even you already owe me a monster energy on those 26s from the first fight. <laughs> Slower pace here to start round three. What are you seeing? Janae trying to reestablish that control of where she's at in the cage, making Sinead fight more off her back foot. Sinead needs to turn that. Again, as we were talking about, when, when you're fighting with just one style, you're being a boxer, you're making it easier on your opponent because they only have to deal with one element instead of everything. You, you brought up Josh Thompson. What made Josh Thompson a great fighter is he would wrestle with you, he would kick, he would strike, he did the entire game, submission, and that makes him difficult to deal with. The more that you go towards just one style, the easier you become for your opponent. You know, I don't want to say anything nice about him because he might be listening, but remember, when he did that, guys weren't doing that yet. Exactly. That was ahead of his time. Exactly. Remember, Harding's put a lot of these kicks in the bank. Sinead Kavanaugh not moving as well here in round three. No, but, you know, Sinead is moving away from those kicks. They're really not landing. She's using it more as a feeler as far as distance to keep Sinead going backwards, which is smart. She needs to continue on with that. Sinead needs to figure out, no, I need to step past it, knock it to the side, sweep it past, and then come with my power. And 61, though, is this the degree Particularly early, particularly in that first round. Those are the ones I was talking about. And today, Kavanaugh has been one-dimensional, but that one dimension has been pretty good tonight. And again, left in the combination. Second of the one, again. See those right there. You see the, it has impact and it has effect. And that's what you're looking for. Right now, when Sinead is hitting Janae, it is affecting us.
watching this fight break down, what you're seeing is the volume is absolutely in Janae Hardy's corner while the power and effective strikes are coming from the power of Janae Kavanaugh. A rematch four and a half years in the making, and it did not disappoint. Nate Kavanaugh landed a lot of big shots. Janae Harding going to make it to the finish. That was good stuff. One year after getting carried out of this cage. Sinead Kavanaugh back on her feet in more ways than one. Sinead Hardy took some big shots from Sinead Kavanaugh, particularly in round number two, which is where the fight turned. First round and the third round were pretty subjective, and it really depends on how you, how you score it, how you judge it. Well, still a little bit of suspense. High stakes, Sinead Kavanaugh ranked third in the division. Needs this win. There's only one man who knows, and his name is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, will go now to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, Sal the model, scores the fight 30 to 27. While judges Marcel Barella and Paul Sutherland both see it the same 29 to 28. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Sinead Kavanaugh. A huge Sigh of relief for Sinead Kavanaugh back in the win column and back with John McCarthy. I'm here with your winner, Sinead Kavanaugh. Sinead, that was a beautiful job of taking a fight that you were having problems with the kicks then stopping that with the counter strikes and landing big heavy strikes throughout the second and third round. Yeah, um, I was just waiting for her to kick. I knew she'd do that, go for the leg, you know, but um, I answered every time. I, I schooled her, you know. I gave her an awful hiding there, you know. You came into this, we know that you're a, you're a brawler, you're someone that you like to strike. At the very end, you went and actually got a takedown. What were you thinking? Yeah, I was, <laughs> why not mix it up a little bit? <laughs> oh, good job, I like that. Yeah, so I just took her down, but uh, she was, I was just waiting, because she's, she's rangy, she's long, so I was just waiting for that up kick. It's actually what happened down with Leah, you know, so. We have some new women here in the featherweights. We got Sarah McMahon that just came in. Kat Zagano is going to be fighting someone you just fought, Lee McCourt. Who should you be fighting next? I don't know, John. Just give me whoever I'm ready for. Sounds good to me. Congratulations on a beautiful victory. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Sinead Kavanaugh. Took her four and a half years to get this pebble out of her shoe. The only other stoppage loss besides the one to Chris Cyborg was the stoppage loss to Janae Harding back in 2018. It is finally crossed off the list for Sinead Kavanaugh. She goes to nine and five and lies in wait at the top of that division. The Grand Prix era in Bellator has been full of magic moments, classic fights, but Tell you, when we're back with you in two weeks, we kick off what might be the most anticipated of them all. Eight of the best lightweights in the world, but don't take my word for it. It takes an elite lightweight to know an elite lightweight. So here's our elite lightweight, Josh Thompson.
If there's one thing that separates Bellator MMA from other promotions, it has to be the World Grand Prix. Eight men vying for the $1 million Grand Prix. This thing promises to be bananas. And those winner-take-all events have produced magical moments. Oh, what a shot by yes, and epic paydays. for Bellator's best. Which means 2023 will be another big year for Bellator MMA as they wrap up their current Bantamweight tournament. The final is set. Rafion Sats will face Patchy Mix for $1 million. And immediately launch the million dollar lightweight World Grand Prix. That's right, eight of the most hungry, talented, and exciting 155ers will not only compete for the big check, but they'll be looking to capture Bellator gold as well. Let's take a look at the phenomenal field of fighters. Current undefeated world champion, Usman Nurmagomedov, faces his toughest test yet when he challenges former WEC and UFC world champ, MMA icon, Benson Henderson. Man, every fight at this moment here is, is everything. It means everything. I am going to have the Bellator lightweight belt around my waist. BJJ Black Belt, Brent Primus, takes on French submission king, Mansour Bonoui. On the other side of the bracket, knockout artist, Tafik Mosaya. Making a statement in his Bellator debut. And Alexander Shabli battle for their spot in the semi-final round. Next time, my bill. An MMA megastar, AJ Mercenary McKee. The Mercenary claims another victim. Draws former lightweight top dog, the Tricky Pitbull. I'm the king of chaos. Let's go. McKee looks to be the only man to ever defeat both Pitbull brothers. Don't take it personal, Pitbull, but I got a leash in a kennel waiting for you. Who will be the last man standing? And $1 million richer? I, for one, can't wait to find out. This is Christmas morning for MMA fans. Looking at this bracket, seven of the eight John have been champions. And the new chapter in the Pitbull McKee story, a little twist, that is a thing of beauty. The Ben Anderson storyline is just his last chance to win a world title. As we like to say, a lot to unpack here. Oh my God, you're taking a look at Ryzen champions, Bellator champions, UFC, WEC, Road FC. Amazing lineup. This may be the most stacked World Grand Prix we have ever put on. So we will crown a lightweight champion and a Grand Prix winner in 2023. But it was 18 months ago in an unforgettable, and I mean unforgettable, Bellator moment in this building. Peter Quirley challenged Patricky Pitbull for the lightweight world title, his second of three consecutive fights against world champions. Tonight, his road back begins. And earlier tonight, the showstopper caught up, well, with our showstopper, Aiden Power. Peter, so many years the road warrior. But in the last few years, this arena has been your home. Last time in September, you went the distance with Benson Henderson. Now, you were coming off shoulder surgery. How is the body this time around, and has it helped your preparation, made it more straightforward for your challenge against Bryce Logan tonight? Two shoulder surgeries and a bicep surgery. <coughs> I'm over them. I'm ready for tonight. I want to kill Bryce Logan. Stylistically, this is a great matchup for the fans. Why do you believe it is for you? Um, we kind of fight similar, but I think I'm just a bit better than him everywhere else. We, we both like going forward. We both like the fight. We're not trying to score points. We're not trying to get, get to the grind out the clock. Um, but I just think I'm a little bit better than him in all these areas. Will the walkout tonight last longer than the fight? Let's hope not, but we never know. I've got to ask you about that walkout. It's so special to watch on TV, even more special inside the arena. Can you give us some insight what's going on in your mind and your body when you're making what is considered the greatest walk in all of combat sport? I'm just trying to enjoy it, Aiden. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take it in and enjoy the thing because it's not going to last forever. It's very special. I know this. I'm very lucky that it's me that gets to, gets to enjoy it every time. So I just try and enjoy it. Best of skill tonight, Peter. Thank you, sir. All right, Aiden, he's tired of talking about losses, which he has been for the last year or so. It is a high-pressure, must-win kind of fight for both Peter Quirley, who has a country 
at a building in his corner. Ready now to make his way to the cage, Bryce Logan. The B-side is a long since used expression in MMA, an often insulting reference to the quote unquote other guy in the fight derived from the olden days when music came, you know, on records and you had to put another song to go on the B-side. I don't think Fortunate Son was ever one of those, but Bryce Logan has always been the B-side, even when he won the LFA title. Well, John, I Am the Walrus was a B-side, Hound Dog was a B-side, so was We Will Rock You. That was a B-side, and that might be Bryce Logan's theme tonight. Yeah, a lot of people are looking at him as an underdog and could do some damage tonight. You know, he is an underdog here, but he can absolutely win this fight. Bryce Logan is an outstanding wrestler, and the one thing you know, just like a lot of wrestlers coming in, he wanted to be exciting, so he kind of got away from the wrestling and went towards, I want to look for the knockout. Not that he doesn't have good stand-up, but his base is wrestling, and that's where everything starts to really shine for him. He needs to go back to that. He needs to put Peter Queeley on his butt, and if he's doing that, he's fighting well, and he can get a win. We have told you the extraordinary story of this song, this crowd you're looking at, and this magnificent, prideful country. If you know it, you know. If you don't, you can find it on YouTube. In the meantime, let's all enjoy it. Here's Peter Queeley is very good on the outside and it's 74.5. He's got a definite reach advantage against the 70 inches of Bryce Logan. To Michael C. Williams. Live on Showtime, Bellator MMA now features the lightweight division scheduled for three five-minute rounds. We go now to the blue corner at 5.9, weighing in 155.8 pounds. As a professional, 12 wins, 7 losses. He fights out of Scottsdale, Arizona, by way of Dolan, South Dakota. Introducing Bryce Logan. In 
his adversary across the cage, fighting out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 155.4 pounds. The recent world title challenger stands with 13 professional victories, seven defeats, one goal. Logan, a great high school wrestler, college football player, fighting for his Bellator life. 0-4 in Bellator, he's fought some tough opponents. In his seven losses, you saw his record. Fighters he has fought have won 73% of their fights. He's taken the tough road, and this is the ultimate road game. Peter Quilly knows that Bryce Logan is way better than what he's been able to do here at Bellator, and he's taken him very seriously. So all of that, yeah, he's had some losses here against good fighters, but Bryce Logan, when if he goes back to his wrestling, he's an outstanding fighter who can grind anybody out and do a lot of damage on the ground. Bryce Logan had some interesting help in camp from one Patricky Pitbull. <laughs> yeah. You got to look at some of the guys that he's training around. Guys, you know, kind of Henry Cejudo, John Jones. He's doing all right. And you think about specifically with Peter Quirley, Patricky spent basically a year preparing Absolutely. to fight Peter Quirley. And gave him some, you know, look, this is part of the fight game, and you're going to have guys that you know that have fought your opponent. And they can give you little insights of where he's trickier in a certain area than you think he is, and they're going to talk about that. Left lead got through. If you remember that, those two fights. Yeah, the blood stoppage with the nasty elbows from Peter Quirley that cut the tricky pit bull, and then the rematch here. See right there, you see how he throws the right kick and then throws the right hand right off of it. That's awkward. That's not something that most guys do. But that's the kind of thing that you get that information, it's not quite the same surprise. Good leg kick by Bryce Logan, keeping Peter Quirley off balance, but he's still coming forward. Peter Quirley, I asked him specifically, before I could finish the question about a potential trilogy fight with Patricky, his face lit up, and you know that's on his bucket list. Nice, clean shot by Bryce Logan there. Peter's been able to control this whole timing right now. He's pushing Bryce back, which is good. He's using his length. Peter Quirley followed the two Patricky fights up with the loss. Tough fight against Ben Henderson. That's why Ben Henderson is in the Grand Prix and Peter Creeley is not. And so we just told you Brett Primus got the first alternate slot and Peter Creeley is kind of hanging on the outside thinking there's going to be another one. That uppercut got through. Some damage Peter Creeley has taken, but he has been the aggressor here for the first three minutes. figure out a way to basically stop this forward motion of Peter Quilly. He's got to start throwing his hands a little bit more. He's still a little bit unsure of what Peter's coming with. There's Logan, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 75 miles away from Logan Storley. His time is approaching. As we head towards the main event, the welterweight world title. So you can see when Bryce Logan gives the feint of changing levels, it stops Peter Queeley in his tracks, and he needs to do more of that. 
There you go. Nice little just knee bend you're seeing. That's making Peter just hesitate just for a fraction of a second. That gives Bryce the opportunity to take a step in and throw his hands. Oh, that was yeah. a clean shot by Peter Cooley, though. <laughs> Peter Cooley aware of the crowd. We talked about trying to enjoy this moment. You heard him say at the 80s, he's been talking about it all week. He heard him. Bryce Logan is hurt right now. And he goes for the level change, but not very effectively. Well, he got into that because he was a little bit wobbly on his legs. He got stiff in there. Very aggressive first round for Peter Quirley. There is no place like it. Take a look right here. Peter Quigley comes with that nice left hook. Bryce Logan backing off from it. Watch this little step. Missed on the second. But he definitely hurt Bryce Logan in that round. You saw Bryce have the effect. He had to step back. He had to try to collect himself. That's why he went for the takedown when he did. He needed to close the distance because he was buzzed. John Cavanaugh should have a chair with his name on it. And the Cody was just, I don't think he's left that spot. <laughs> Peter Quilly has one of the greatest noses in Sir, mixed ready? martial arts. Sir, that thing is a picture perfect nose for a fighter. It is the map of the world on it. <laughs> Doubt about that first round. No doubt about that one at all. That was easily Peter Cleary's round. And you know, he's been peppered with questions all week. Is is this a step down? Is it a must win? You know, and he was like, what do you, I just fought three world champions in a row. Everything almost by definition was going to be a step down. And everything's a must win. You take a look, you know, winning solves everything. So when you're in this position, you got to win because that's what keeps you moving forward. Outstanding job of using his length, creating the opportunities to put Bryce Logan on his back foot, land clean shots, for the most part evade a lot of what Bryce has been throwing. We've seen a wide range of emotions from John Kavanaugh tonight. The many faces. He's been pleased for the most part with the first six plus minutes for Peter Quinn. Because if he wasn't, you'd know it. Peter Quinn, you don't see a lot of 5'11 lightweights. That one got through him. And immediately, Bryce Logan goes to the level change. Logan gives it up. He went for the elbows to try to drop the elbows instead. Bryce nice Logan on the single leg right now. He had to protect his neck for a second there. And we'll see if he's going to try to take and run the pipe on this. Turn Peter Keeley's back off of the cage. Because right now that cage is a beautiful balance point. Keeping Keeley basically not having to work hard to stay on his feet. Professional career. That elbow was massive, Sean. 
He absolutely Be quiet, obliterated Be Peter quiet, Quilly with that elbow. Peter did not see it coming, and when you don't see the shot and it lands with that type of impact, it's going to do damage. Let's take a look at that if we can. Huge change here. Watch that elbow right on the jawline, and it puts Quilly down. Quilly is trying to cover up. Watch this land right on the jawline. Fantastically placed elbow. There's another shot. You can see the impact it has. See the hydrostatic shock of his head jerking back from it. And then Bryce Logan just opens up trying to put him away. Let's watch it at real speed if we can, just so you can see how fast. Watch how quick this comes up. Bip. And he's down. We talked about the help he got from Patricky Pitbull. Bryce Logan now becomes the second man to stop Peter Quirley. Patricky being the other, also in round two, also in this same cage, in this same building. And entering the fight on his first losing streak, now three straight for Peter Quirley. He had the fight going the way he wanted it for the first seven minutes, but it only took one shot. That's how careers change in an instant. To Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Two minutes, 32 seconds into round number two. The winner by TKO Bryce Logan. An honor and a pleasure, says Bryce Logan, and he's talking to John McCarthy. I'm here with Bryce Logan, the winner. That was a dramatic change of events. The first round was not going your way. He actually hurt you in that round. Did a nice job of getting yourself to a safe position. Talk to me about what was the difference of what happened in that second round compared to the first. You know, I just... Um I had to stay calm. I knew he kind of stole that first round at the end. He think he caught me with a right hand. But, um, you know, there's still two rounds left. I knew I had plenty of time to work, and I was going to try to start to implement my wrestling. He stuffed that takedown, and I just felt like I had a window over the top to land that elbow, and it landed clean, and it, the rest was history after that. Clean is not the word. That thing landed right on the jawline, and he went down immediately. How, how hurt did you really believe he was? You know, when he went down, I knew he was hurt. When he didn't answer back after a couple of punches, I had a feeling it was over. This is now your first win here in the Bellator cage. This is now putting you back in the, on the map as far as you are a name that has won the LFA title. You have come here. You fought tough competition. That's one of the toughest fighters you've ever fought. You got a big win against him. Who is it you want to fight next? Man, I, I don't have a name. I, have, I didn't even think about it. I was so wrapped up in this opportunity and this chance that I had right here, and I knew I had to make a statement if I wanted to stick around. You know, my back was against the wall. I've lost three, my first three here, and I knew I needed to do something dramatic. I couldn't just come out here and, and squeak out a decision. I knew I, need, I needed to make a statement to stick around, so, you know, I feel like I did that, and we'll see who Bellator has for me next. I'd love to stick around, so. No doubt about it, a statement was made. Congratulations on a big, huge victory against a great fighter in Peter Quilly. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Bryce Logan. And no matter how many times we are taught the lesson, it's always jarring when it's taught to us again. Life can change as Bryce Logan just taught us again. Life can change in the blink of an eye. Yesterday marked the one-year anniversary of the start of the war in Ukraine. On February 24, 2022, Yaroslav Amosov was the undefeated, undisputed welterweight champion of the world. 24 hours later, he was a Ukrainian citizen, a patriot, and in an instant, a soldier.
have front line where every time attack, every time war, but we have city where normal life. So maybe you go uh, drink coffee and uh, racket attack and uh, maybe you dead. I remember uh, many, many picture in my head. You see many, many civil people dead. Old woman, kids, family. I don't know why should old woman, why should kids? It's civil people, it's not army. Why, why Russian, Russian army do this? I not understand. Sometimes I go sleep and uh, I close my eyes and I see this. And sometimes I no sleep. When Russian army get out uh, my city and the uh, central Ukrainian, I call my mother and they say, where my my belt? And uh, she say, you belt, I uh, hidden. She say, where? And I go and uh, I long time, where my belt, where my belt? And uh, after I take my belt and uh, my friends say me, Yaroslav, you must go defense your belt. I long time think, maybe yes, maybe no, but I, many people say me, you must go, and uh, I go. Uh, what happening now in Ukraine, I, I, for me, it's very big motivation. I want, uh, I want to go to cage and I want to win. I leave my city and I start training. Yeah, of course, it's very hard. But I will go to Ukrainian after fight, and I want to uh, show our world Ukrainian people, very strong, very hard people. So maybe news uh, for you, one Ukrainian guy, defense belt, maybe this uh, good uh, for people. I fight for them. John, I've seen that a lot of times now, and it's jarring every time you see it. And what struck me being around him this week is that he almost can't understand why everyone's making a big deal. He's almost amused by it. This extraordinary act of patriotic sacrifice to him seems like just an ordinary act of being Ukrainian. You know, it, he said several things that, you know, when he says, I close my eyes and I, st I see it, and I can't unsee it, sometimes I can't sleep. People need to understand the things that he has been through now. He's been to war. We talk about, you know, what happens in this cage all the time, and the guys are warriors. No, the guys that are out there doing what he had to go through, those are the warriors, but those warriors that he fought with wanted him to come back, and that's why he's here tonight. That is to inspire them. So you gotta look at him, you say, man, you, you, took, you took the hard step. You did something that a lot of people won't do gave up a world championship and put your life on the line and man you gotta have nothing but respect for Yaroslav Amazon and he's he's thrilled to be back he's thrilled to be back training and it matters to him every second of every day he's thinking about not just what he went through but the things he saw the people he was with that said you need to go back not for you you need to go back for us that's it you no know, and he's he's actually here now because he believes and he's been told you're gonna do better things for us going fighting and showing people what the ukrainian spirit is about that's why he's here pretty amazing yaroslav amasov has captured the hearts and minds of the world in our main event tonight what's interesting about the co-main event tonight is that pedro Carvalho has captured the hearts and minds of the fans in ireland despite the fact that he was an outsider when he got here that is a special story in and of itself he has fought for the world title now the rare second chance at a second chance pedro Carvalho, now suddenly one of dublin's favorite sons is standing by with amanda Sean, thank you so much here with Pedro Carvalho. Coming off what you have called the best performance of your career against Mads Burnell, you said technically it was the best performance. You talked about your maturity and control. What's evolved for you, though, since then? 
It was just, you know, uh, my whole journey, you know, especially my failures, my setbacks. I made sure that I learned from them and I showed that I learned from them. And right now, I know that I have all the abilities to be world champion. You know, I showed them against Mats Vernell, one of the best featherweights in the, in, in the world. And, uh, you know, I don't like to say that I make it look easy because it was a, a good fight, but I was never in danger. Um, and tonight's going to be just the same. So I'll go out there, made a spectacular win, and make sure that there's no doubt who's the number one in the division. So let's talk about your opponent in Jeremy Kinney because he has been talking a lot about you. Is there bad blood between the two of you? In my, in my side, no. I don't take nothing personally, but, you know, he, from the very beginning, um, he made sure to make it personal and, and he invented this narrative that I was being cocky to him when everything that he said wasn't actually true. It wasn't nothing at all like that. But, you know, he can try to motivate himself the way that he wants it. When I'm in there, I'm cold-blooded. I'm, you know, I'm just doing my business and win. That's it. If you win and you when get a re win. when you win and get a rematch with Patricio Pitbull, if that were to happen, what would that mean to you to face him again for a title? My rematch with Pitbull means nothing. What means to me is the world title. That's what means everything for me. I don't care about names. I don't care about no one. Just care about me being world champion. That's it. Who, who I have to beat? No care. Good luck tonight. He says there's no bad blood, just cold bloodedness with Pedro. But let's send it over to Aiden with Jeremy Kennedy. Well, thanks, Amanda. We will talk about Jeremy's opponent, Pedro, in just a moment. But, Jeremy, i got to say welcome to Dublin. Here you are once again in enemy territory. What are you expecting tonight from this arena? Uh, yeah, just a lot of energy, and I'm going to feed off that energy, you know. This is uh, something I've kind of done my whole career, is this enemy ter territory burning the boats, so I'm just ready for another one of those. So this fight has potentially been in the making for almost two years now. Pedro has just told Amanda there is no bad blood. But I know this week you spoke about feeling disrespected. What's, what's your side of the story? Yeah, I mean, there's no bl bad blood. It's, we're here. We're, it's time to fight now. The talking's done. The fight's signed. Um, this fight is was a long time coming. You know, there's a little bit of back and forth, but that's just the nature of the, the game. You know, we, we're both competitors. We're both trying to get this number one contender, and here we are finally, you know, knocking on the door of this title shot. He is an obstacle to that title shot. What would it mean to get the victory tonight and be potentially the number one cont contender to fight for the title? That's just all the hard work, you know, every every day I wake up, I'm trying to get to this spot, you know, and now I'm right at the doorstep. And my whole camp, every camp prior, every fight prior, I've been building in this division for two years now. And uh, this is it's all coming down to this, you know, and every fight's the next fight's the biggest. So once we get through Pedro, it's going to be another big challenge again. So I'm just, fo I just focus on myself getting better. Every Every camp, every day, every decision I make in life is just for this moment. And you spoke to us this week as about putting on a statement performance tonight, scoring some style points and getting this done early. Why is it important to make such a big statement? Um, I just think you always want to put the division on notice. You know, I want the rest, I want the next guy I'm fighting to be to be concerned and be looking back at this fight and, and see what I'm capable of. But at the same time, it, I just want my arm raised. You know, I'm plain and simple. I'm just going out there and winning at all costs. And whatever that takes, whatever that looks like, I, I'm getting my arm raised. I'm not going home. Without it, that's it. Good luck tonight, Jeremy. Oh, man, thank you very much. All right, Aiden, now why are we talking about this as a title eliminator? The math is not complicated. Adam Borch coming off a loss. AJ McKee is in the lightweight Grand Prix. Aaron Pico responded well to surgery. He is on his way back, but again, on his way back. So as a result, the winner here could very easily be the number one contender, the next title challenger, which means high stakes in the co-main event, not to mention, between these two, as you're about to find out, well, with Jeremy Kennedy and Pedro Carvalho, it's personal, too. Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy! I want Pedro's ass in Ireland. And J.B.C. has landed, and he knows the task at hand. He starts mouthing me off on uh, Twitter and whatnot, so guess what, Pedro? I'm coming for your ass now. I'll be the hunter, and once again, he'll be the prey. What a performance of not only the future. And Caballo looking for it again. There's some time. I'm the present. It's over, Pedro Caballo. He's not getting out of here. I'm taking his head off.
now set to make his way to the cage, Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy. In MMA, the mistakes you make as a young fighter not only get erased, they almost are always a teachable moment. They make you better. Jeremy Kennedy has made them, erased them, and now stands on the verge of a title shot. The same, though, can't be said for nicknames, because those mistakes can last forever. When told as a young fighter in love with McDonald's that he needed to eat cleaner, he switched to an all-Wendy's diet, explaining to his coaches in earnest that they use all fresh ingredients. And that is why he was come to be known as JBC, an acronym for Junior Bacon Cheeseburger. As a fighter, though, John, he's the full meal now. Oh, he's the full meal. That's a horrible, horrible nickname. <laughs> I'd love to give Jeremy a better one. It's a he, great snack, but, he but it's a horrible his, nickname. Uh, look, he is a phenomenal fighter, and he is an outstanding wrestler who grinds guys, puts a lot of pressure. You see all those marks that are under his left arm. Those are all his victories, and he wants to put one more tattoo mark on that after the fight tonight. 18 and counting. Ready now to make his way the game. Pedro Garvalho. Backdrop to tell the story of Pedro Carvalho because home is what you make it. Family is family. And the last time Pedro Carvalho fought here in Dublin, he beat Mads Burnell in September. A win, probably the best of his career, and it moved him to this number three ranking with a striking position in the featherweight division. But it was a moment that happened after the fight that meant just as much to him. He was asked by an Irish media outlet to pose for a picture with other Irish fighters. And that kind of brought his struggles the previous few years into full circle. John, he has his family, he has found himself, and man, has he ever found a home. Boy, he found a home here. He, you want to talk about confidence. We always talk about confidence is key for a fighter. You will not find a more confident individual than Pedro Carvalho. His last fight against Mads Burnell, who I think is a fantastic fighter, he absolutely dominated a good fighter in Mads Burnell, a teammate of Jeremy Kennedy's. And so he believes that he can do the same thing here tonight against Jeremy Kennedy. JBC to Triple H, the game. Pedro Carvalho, an homage to the game. Let's check out the tail of the tape in the cold main event. Very simply put, you, you look at the records are somewhat similar, height's the same, weight's the same, reach is close the same. 27 years of age for Pedro Carvalho. It's just coming into his own. Jeremy Kennedy's right there at 30. Bellator MMA presents live on Showtime tonight's co-main event, three five-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner at 5'11", weighing in 146 pounds even, ranked at number five. He holds a professional record, including 18 wins, three losses from Surrey, British Columbia, Canada. He fights out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy. And across the cage, his adversary fights out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 145.4 pounds, currently ranked at number three. The former world title challenger brings 13 professional victories, six defeats. Originally from uh, Guimanaes, Portugal, he fights now out of Dublin, Ireland, introducing the game, Pedro Carvalho. In charge of the action, your referee, Keith Peterson. Sir, are you ready? Sir, are you ready? Fight! High, high stakes in the co-main event. Very high stakes right now. This is a very important fight for both individuals. 
Carvalho, John, a notoriously slow starter. He can't be tonight. Absolutely, and that's one of the things I was going to just talk about is Jeremy Kennedy needs to establish. Pedro likes to come forward, and when he comes forward, he is on fire. And he needs to make sure that Pedro has a hard time stepping forward. Every time Pedro comes forward with something, he needs to respond, react, and hit him with a good shot. Both fighters have this in common. They had a very high-profile loss at a young age to one of the best fighters in the world. That's a good kick. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Carvalho got that one in. Carvalho's, of course, came to Patricio Pitbull, a fight he said he was just not ready for. Meanwhile, the guillotine early in the round. Not a lot of sweat. Not, you see him trying to force that to the inside there. That's why Jeremy put it down right at that yeah. point. That made it a little tight, though. You need to be careful when you're doing that. He's got his head a little bit to the side, I can see. That's tight, though. It's not that it's to the point where it's going to choke him out at this moment. But he's got to work his way through it. Jeremy Kennedy had to be coached to go for the hand to break up the grip. So Carvalho's came to Patricio Pitbull. Jeremy Kennedy flew halfway across the world in a fight I talked to him about. And he was just not ready for in terms of preparation, all the things that go into a world travel fight week, especially when Alexander Volkanovsky is the guy on the other side of the cage. Yeah, and you know, it's again, as a young fighter, it's it's the whole JVC thing. You think, you know, you can get away with things because, oh, I'm so good, I can eat those kind of things. You have to learn how to become a professional. Jeremy Kennedy now, he's a professional. He's had a lot of these road games. Right here in Pico, California, he fought in Brazil. Volkanovski fight was in Australia. This right here is a very important moment for Pedro Carvalho because if Jeremy Kennedy can control Pedro at this time while he's dry, but while he's fresh, the fight's only going to get worse for Pedro because Jeremy's going to feel confident. He's going to start coming forward more, looking for the takedowns and putting Pedro back on the mat. So he's got to work at getting himself either in that position, using the cage to get himself back to the feet, or get a reversal here. He went for the guillotine. That made it for an easy takedown. It didn't work out. Now he's got to get himself out of this predicament. for Jeremy Kennedy, and there is Patricky checking in. We talked about his help, and he was the he was the Queely whisperer to Bryce Logan leading up to that upset win we just saw. Nice lace of the right arm there of Pedro. You see him, Jeremy, has got his right arm holding it, so he can open up with that left. Two hands under each chin, lift up his head. Body of work for Jeremy Kennedy, the different levels of experience. Throughout the globe, fighting top fighters. Three and one in the UFC, three and one in Bellator, went down PFL for a while. Really paid off during this run. I know a lot of people sort of discredited the Pico fight because of the injury, but Jeremy Kennedy did his job. He did his job. I, you know, I, I hear people all the time, wow, you know, Aaron Pico, got he did. But Jeremy Kennedy didn't do anything wrong. In fact, he went and won that fight. And that's just the way fighting goes sometimes. I mean, Aaron Pico's going to be back. That featherweight title picture, especially the big question is what does Patricio want to do here? Does he want to go down? And if so, when? And is there another title fight at 145? And is this the title eliminator here we're talking about right now? That could be. You just don't know because Patricio has talked about going down and fighting Sergio Pettis for that 135 pound bantamweight strap. He wants to be the first fighter in Bellator history to own three different weight divisions. Because it gets so much easier when you get older to lose weight, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to think of Patricio Pitbull legacy shopping when his legacy is pretty darn good as it is. And again, borderline dominance here on the ground, which is what we expected from Jeremy Kennedy. Jeremy Kennedy's had his way with this so far, so this is all looking good for Jeremy Kennedy right now.
This is the co-main event, which means up next, the next chapter of this extraordinary story will be written in the cage. And if it wasn't for Yaroslav Amosov's heroism and the story that has captured the imagination of the world, we'd be talking about what a great first fight they had and this high-level rematch between two guys who, as you see, have one loss between them, and that one loss on the board was inflicted by Amosov on a story in that split decision a couple of years back. Uh, what does Pedro Carvalho have to do here in round two? He's got to stop the takedown. He's got to, if it's going to get into a battle, he needs to be the guy coming out in the top position. He is very good on the ground, but Jeremy Kennedy is outstanding there too. So in the stand-up, push Jeremy Kennedy back. When Jeremy is on his back foot, he doesn't throw. He starts to look and wait. So Pedro is normally a guy that puts a lot of pressure on his opponents. He's got to try to put that pressure on Jeremy right now. It's hard to argue he's not coming off the best performance of his career against Mads Burnell, but he hasn't been that guy to put a couple of two or three together. Yeah, you know, when he first came to, to Bellator, you know, his first fight was against a guy named Danny Crawford, who was an outstanding 10-1, I believe. Or no, sorry, 10-0 at the time that he fought Pedro. It was his first loss. And he's had some great wins against Sam Cecilia and guys like that. But that fight against Pedro, I mean, excuse me, against Patricio, he got knocked out. He came back too fast. In my opinion, I and I told him, I said, you're coming back too fast, you need more time off. And he had a bad performance against J.J. Wilson, and things started to go a little bit away from him. He's getting it back now, but this is going to be a tough fight. Colombian and realized, and we talked about this too, that he felt he had to get out of Canada to get to the higher level. It was part of the Volkanovsky story that he thought he was fine training up there and he needed to upgrade. Again, these are a lot of the upgrades. This high level wrestling now takes the back. Nice body lock takedown by Jeremy Kennedy. Triangles it up. And it is, it has been that change. He's training at Extreme Couture. His coach, Eric Nixick, loves him as a, as a person that's always in the gym, always working hard, now great nutrition, always staying in shape. And he's working out with guys like Patchy Mix yep. and all these other guys. So he's got some studs around him, Aljamain Sterling. Mads Brunel, too, by the way, speaking of scouting yep. the guy that you're fighting. Pedro's very calm in this position. He's not really too worried about the choke. He knows he's got to control the hands. But he's got to get that foot, just like he is, to the ground. Now he can start to try to peel that leg and get himself out of there. That was nice work by Carvalho. That's why you're seeing Jeremy go to his hooks, because he, he, he knows Pedro likes to peel that foot. That's why he can't peel it now. Right, look, he's trying to block triangle, but he's got it back. And he, Pedro doesn't feel that he has that on his leg. He's trying to push that foot off. It's not working for him. The game within the game on the game. It is. It's all little incremental things. And this this switch. Two minutes. Now the problem is if he brings the foot to the ground, he's putting himself into the cage. Not a lot of room to work with him. Improved defense from Pedro Carvalho, but he's coming he lost, out of this though. He lost, nice the first, he lost the first round, and at some point, defense isn't going to help him. And this is one of those situations if you're Jeremy Kennedy, and now you've been on the ground with him, you've gotten that figure four in his body, and you weren't able to even kind of attempt a good choke, then the next time you go there, it's time to start using strikes. I need to loosen him up, make him pay. Oh, 
just grinding and grinding and grinding. Now, he's, he's, a couple of times he's put his head in a, not a great spot, and yep. he pops it out. See, this is a place now, Jeremy is very wise to all the attacks that Pedro can create, and he's just going to grind with his head, use his pressure to create problems for Pedro, and just try to use some strikes now, beat him up a little bit. Pedro's got to work at getting himself back to his feet. The knock on Pedro Carvalho over the years has been that he takes too many chances. And now he's put himself in a position where he's probably going to have to win round two. Absolutely. Super lightweight division, but Jaramillas Ponce looks to stay undefeated. Matias versus Ponce on Showtime. What a way to start! This huge day on Showtime. Packed house at the Three Arena, the town that Pedro Carvalho now calls home. Born in Portugal, pride of Surrey, British Columbia. Little known Jeremy Kennedy fact, he was in the and with the Vancouver Canucks lost the Stanley Cup in 2011 to the Bruins, and there were some riots in Mick. Jeremy Kennedy was right in the middle of that. So he didn't do anything, but found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was I, I was actually there at that time. Oh, you know, listen, I believe when you say, hey, I've been to Dagestan and I've been to these places I've never heard of, I believe you. You were at the Stanley so Cup ready? riot in Vancouver yes, in 2011. Because, yes, I was. <laughs> Were you in the middle of it saying, let's get it off? No, I was not. I was trying to get my butt out of there. <laughs> you're, you're Forrest Gump, man. You've been, you're like Thank in all you. these historic moments. Stupid is as stupid does. <laughs> nice job by Pedro here. He's got to really open up and start going for this. He can't get into a, just a slow grinding game. If he believes that he can take Jeremy down and move to good positions and do damage, great. Nice job of stepping around. So he needs to be slick. Think about you know, tripping with the leg. Take one of your feet, put it behind the leg. You see Kennedy going for the Kamara there. Nice change of position. That happened so easy. Yep. Pedro's in on the same type of Kamara grip to try to change it back, but he doesn't have the same angle. Physically, he is very strong, able to pick up Carvalho when he wants, elevate him, get his feet off of the floor, and bring him right down to where he wants. And this is where I was talking the last time he was trying for chokes. Now you need to start opening up, start using some strikes. Maybe that will open up the chin area and allow you to sink in that choke. Here they come. That's where Carvalho holds it on to those hands now. Going for it. And seven minutes of ground control through the math out of 13 minutes of the fight, not even. Hard to think of a moment where this was not going the way Jeremy Kennedy wanted to go. Now this has been a clean sweep right now for Jeremy Kennedy. He's been able to control the fight where he wants, when he wants. He's never been in danger in this fight. He's just completely dominated the action for the most part with his grappling. He 
you forget about prospects exploding on the scene at 22 23 they have a high profile loss and then people tune away and they forget that they're still getting better and better and better and it took Jeremy Kennedy maybe a longer path and a lot of different stops but he has become the fighter at age 30 that a lot of people thought he was going to be seven eight years ago absolutely and that's really you know the story of it is everyone as soon as you see you lose they give up on you it's oh he's not that good there are so many good fighters out here and all it takes is time time and effort to get them to the point where they are now competing and they are so hard to beat that's Jeremy Kennedy right now. The variety of competition the variety of trainers the variety of coaches in different locations this is the night he has put it all together been dominant and Jeremy is what he's wanting to finish this yeah he is you know, he's trying to do things and he maybe should look you can always if you go back to the hooks you can look towards sliding towards an arm bar but not easy to do unless someone that knows what they're doing in defense so lots of that body lock for two and a half three minutes here in the third round Pedro trying to turn inside of that figure four. Unable to do it. This is what we talk. You got to put that foot to the ground because that stops him from being able to squeeze completely and allows you to kind of turn yourself and push that leg away and get your shoulders flat on the ground. And Jeremy Kennedy comes to Dublin and pitches a perfect game. Carvalho, who has tasted sweet victories, climbing the ladder, and some really bitter defeats. He knows the difference. And Jeremy Kennedy about to add to that tattoo. Joe Carvalho never lacks for entertainment, never lacks for effort. But he was outperformed start to finish here tonight by that man. Tried to pull apart the Aaron Pico win because of the injury. Jeremy Kennedy did his job that night, and he has done it again. He, he has put himself in prime position. Michael C. Williams makes it official. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Sal D'Amato, Ben Carlitz, Brian Miner. I'll have it exactly the same at 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Jeremy J.B.C. Kennedy. He's earned himself a junior bacon cheeseburger. Jeremy Kennedy, J.B.C. is with B.J.M. I'm, I'm here with Jeremy Kennedy. In fact, Sean Grandy just said you just earned yourself a junior bacon cheeseburger. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That was a dominant win against the number three ranked guy in the featherweight division. Where do you think this now puts you? Man, I'm, I, I believe I've been number one the whole time. And I think this just proves it, you know. I wanted to come on here and make a statement. And uh, I don't make excuses. All day, all week, I've been feeling kind of sh shitty. You know, crapping my guts out, but he's, he's a tough guy. He's a guy that you, he's gonna be right in your face and active the whole time. And yeah, man, it's, it's a tiring style to fight, but uh, even on my worst day, I can 30-27 these guys, you know? So that's the statement I'm taking here is, 
on my worst day finding I'm not happy with my performance. And that's the number three ranked guy. And I'm able to walk through and do that. I don't know where, where are these, John, what are we gonna do about these rankings, man? I keep beating these guys that are way ranked higher than me. So uh, I expect to, you know, you keep what you kill, you eat what you kill. So I'm at least number three now. So who is it you should be fighting? Pitbull, you know, that's the, that's the fight. That's the only fight right now is that title fight. Pitbull, you better not be running down to 35. I'm the guy to fight. I'm the guy in this division. This is my division. I'm a dog walk them all around this cage. Big win. Congratulations, Jeremy Kennedy, ladies and gentlemen. And he does it right in front of Scott Coker, who watched him say it, although a little TMI from JBC, but we forgive it. A lot has happened in the last 27 months since Amasov Storley won most of the world titles in Bellator of Change Stands, including one to one of the Yaroslav Amasov's teammates, another undefeated world champion, Johnny Eblen, who's here in Dublin and standing by with Amanda. Sean, that's absolutely right. I am here with our middleweight champ, Johnny Eblen. Johnny, it's pretty incredible. Uh, three weeks ago, you're defending your belt, and at that time we talked to you, you said, I'm going to be in Ireland to watch my teammate, Amasov. Why was it so important for you to make this trip? You're not even in his corner. You're just here supporting him as a friend. He's like my Ukrainian brother. Um, there's one guy in the gym that really pushes me, that really inspires me, especially what he just went through with this whole war and everything. Um, this literally means nothing, you know. He, he's out there protecting his family and his countrymen, and I would have done the same thing, and I'm literally going to fucking cry. Um, <laughs> It's really inspiring, and um, I just wanted to be a part of this journey. You know, I just want to—he inspires me every day in training, and I'm just glad to be a part of it, and I just wanted to come out here and support. I know you saw that feature, and it brought a tear to your eye, and it's bringing a tear to your eye right now. Why is that? Because this literally means nothing. Like, there's kids and women, and people are just dying, and we're fighting for sport. That's fighting for life. It's different. It's not the same talk to us about his training. I, I went to ATT actually to watch you train and you brought him over. You said, this is my brother. I said, how is he feeling going into this fight? You said, by gosh, he is ready. How has his training been at ATT? His training's been amazing. Um, he's the one guy, like I said, in the gym that really pushes me, that really pushes me to that next level. That is a reason why I'm a world champion now. And uh, I mean, I remember the first day when we got back together and we trained, he's like, dude, I missed you. I was like, I missed you too. because. I haven't been pushed like that in a while, and it, it's just, you know, I'm glad to have my Ukrainian brother back and, and that we're training and, and, and everything's back to normal. Well, not quite back to normal all the way, but at, at least we get to train together, and at least he's fighting tonight and getting to represent his country. I know you've been able to talk to him, son. Final words of, of good luck to him as he makes his way into the cage for the first time in 20 months. Hey, man, go out there, do your thing, have fun, and beat his ass. You know you're the best in the world. Pound for pound, best in the world tonight. You are. Let's do it. Johnny, we appreciate it. Sean, back to you. All right, Amanda. I mean, Johnny but you can see there, he's visibly moved even now just talking about it. And as we said, 99% of the conversation about this fight has been about the Amosov story, and rightly so. But it has overshadowed the fact that we forget that Amosov is a dominant fighter, particularly when he beat Douglas Lima for the world's title. Oh, my God. It's amazing that, you know, when you look at Amosov, such a good wrestler, but he never wrestled. But his MMA wrestling is unbelievable. He does things that a lot of guys that have wrestled in college cannot do. He took Douglas Lehman down, and I can tell you long ago, Brian Stan, who used to be a middleweight, talked about training with Douglas Lehman and how hard he was to take down. Yaroslav Amazon made it look easy. He dominated that fight 50 45, all the judges' cards. It wasn't close. He's that good. 26 and 0, Sean. That is remarkable. When you talk about having that many wins in a row, you're doing something right. Meanwhile, you saw Johnny Eblen, you know, his win over Gegar Busasi for the title. That was an upset with Logan Storley. Uh, when he beat MVP, that was considered an upset, too. <laughs> Absolutely. And Logan Storley has done everything right. You know, he came into MMA, and he was just a wrestler. And then he got his hands going, and he really has turned into an outstanding mixed martial artist. His wrestling transferred so well, because a lot of wrestlers, it doesn't, but his is fantastic. 
at his fight against MVP, he figured out right away, I'm going against a guy that can touch me from a distance that I've never had anyone be able to touch me from. I need to get back to my basics. He did. He got the win. That's what winners do. You know, it's funny. I asked Logan Story this week. If he wasn't the one fighting him, would he be rooting for Amosov tonight? You know, he's had to answer all those kind of questions all week long. But I can tell you this about Logan Storley. If you're rooting for Amosov tonight, he does not care. If you don't like the way he fights, he does not care because Logan Storley came here tonight to do the same thing he has done his entire life over and over and over. Win. I've heard the criticism, but I'm about winning, and that's what I've been my whole life. He is the interim welterweight world champion. A great display of what he is so good at. Yeah, I'm a wrestler first. That's what my bloodline is from five years old until now. Hard work, outworking everyone, and uh, grinding guys out. That's really what I am as a fighter first. The funny thing I always, I guess, have to say is, it's MMA, right? Mixed martial arts. We're putting all the arts together to see who the best fighter is. And, you know, I understand that it's entertainment and people also buy tickets and, and watch the fight. So I 100% understand that. But at the same time, I understand winning. And wrestling has always been find a way to win. I'm 14 and 1. I have a belt. I'm continuing to get better. And if all my fights were super exciting, but I was two and three, you would have no idea who I was. And so you have to win in this sport. Yaroslav Amazov, Logan Storley, for this battle of unbeatens. Yeah, the first Amazov fight, I set a high pace early. But the, the best thing about that fight was I brought out a different fighter in him and he brought out a different fighter in me and that was the first fight where I couldn't get to my takedown early he couldn't get to a takedown and we started throwing hands and and pushed each other to you know everything we had and then some yeah Yaroslav Amosov he's got really good balance and he makes you work for everything you're not just gonna get to an easy shot and finish it it really came down to two or three scrambles well, I remember about this fight Logan, it's wrestling. I see every my jab, my punch, he attack my single leg every time. After that fight, I kind of said to myself, like, that can't happen ever again. And I made the changes. And, you know, since then, I'm 3-0 and interim champ. What he did for his country and everything else along the way is, you know, that takes a real man to go do that. So I respect him for that. And I'm glad he's back. He's had time to be back 100% training and we're both healthy. And we know how uh, grueling and, and brutal this fight is gonna be for both of us to set that pace for 25 minutes. But he's not gonna beat me this time. For me, it, this, this is the one I wanted. This is the one that means the most. I think it's good fight, hard fight. I think it's beautiful fight. Going into this fight, I, I truly think you're watching the top two welterweights in the world. I truly, truly believe that. But this fight's gonna be a little different. I think I've changed and grown a lot. He's grown. You know, I'm not just a wrestler. That first fight, I was just a wrestler. And this fight, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a complete fighter. I'm excited for it. Logan have belt, I have belt. Uh, when we fight, we have only one real champion. It's Ukrainian boy. <laughs> Bottom line, it's time to find out who the best welterweight in the world really is. Three of them run this town. That's depth. I don't think oh, yeah. 
annual by their record if they made one, but the University of Minnesota wrestling program can make a pretty good claim to running this town. Brock Lesnar, Gable Stevenson, all the way back to Vern Gagne, even Cole Conrad, the first undefeated Bellator champion. Logan Storley was a six-time state champion, four-time All-American to you. Not every high-level wrestler, John, their game translates to MMA. Logan Storley's needed no translation. It was fluent almost immediately. Yeah, no doubt about it, but yeah, you go back to just what you just said. Six-time state champion. That meant as a seventh grader, this man beats seniors to be a state champion. He is mentally tough. His keys to victory is he must come out on top in those wrestling exchanges. You cannot settle for the bottom and believe in your stand-up. You need to use your stand-up to make your wrestling more effective. Stan, a silver star, Pat Tillman, left the NFL to enlist in the U.S. Army. The fact that Yaroslav Amosov is even here tonight is a gift. His life, we know, will never be the same. Now, John, the question is, will he be the same dominant fighter he was two years ago? You know, it is the question because you talk about Logan Storley, and he has been fighting, and he's been active, and... Amazov has not been active, and there's a difference between training in the gym and being in that fight. The speed and timing is different, and we're going to see if there's any difference in what he does tonight. The tail of the tape in the main event for the welterweight world title. As simple as it gets, how can you get past the records? 26 and 0, that is the very best record in MMA right now. Active record, 14 and 1, and that one loss came against the man on the other side of that side. So these guys, unbelievable records, unbelievable fighters. The final chapter of an unforgettable return has arrived. It is main event time. It is undisputed welterweight world title time. It's Michael C. Williams time. Bellator MMA live on Showtime from Three Arena here in Dublin. The time has come for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Welterweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Mohegan Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner. Supervising at cage side, Director Mike Mazzulli. And now, first introducing the blue corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 169.4 pounds as the interim champion. He enters tonight ranked at number one, bringing a nearly perfect professional record of 14 wins, just one defeat. Fighting out of Webster, South Dakota, USA, presenting the challenger, Logan Storm. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 169.4 pounds after a year of defending his Ukrainian homeland. Tonight, he returns to defend his world title for the first time, holding the longest at 
active win streak in MMA. He enters undefeated at 26 and 0. Hailing from and proudly representing in beam Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen, the reigning and defending Bellator welterweight world champion Yaroslav. The referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Gentlemen, five rounds under the unified rules to unify the belts. We went over those rules in the back. Want a good fight? We'd like touch gloves, and best of luck. After a year of defending his home, Yaroslav Amasov has found his way back to his other home. Let's go. 27 months after their first meeting, the rematch for the title. I think in this matchup, you're going to see Logan Storley much more at home, staying on his feet, trying to use his hands against Amazov. He's not going to go right to the wrestling like he did in the first match. In which Amazov stuffed his first couple of takedown attempts which was jarring because what do you do when everything you've worked for that has worked for you your whole life suddenly stops working well you run into that one guy who all of a sudden gives you problems in your strong suit which is wrestling for logan everyone knows how good amazon is with his wrestling johnny evelyn who comes from a wrestling background university of missouri will tell you man i'm telling you he is so hard to take down he is so good with his wrestling so he's just that guy you know, GSP was one of them, never wrestled, but boy, he could wrestle in an MMA cage. How good is Logan Storley's wrestling? Ask Kamar Usman. Yeah, exactly. You know, this is why when, you know, Logan Storley is sitting there saying, I believe that we're the two best, you know, welterweights in the world. Logan trains with one of the best welterweights in the world. He is hurt. Right yeah, good counter right he is and that John Logan Storley. That was off his after him. Chad is Ukraine, Ukraine. I heard Amanda earlier talk about how many Ukrainians have relocated because of the war all over Europe, but particularly here in Ireland. Nice left hand by Amazon. He's, nice. he's now cut sorely. Right near the eye. I mean, just look at the fluidity of his movement, Sean. He is at home. He's comfortable. And this is after a two, basic two-year layoff. It's amazing that he's just walking right back in here. And we had to see it because everybody who was training with him was telling us this. But you just didn't know, given the circumstances, if they were speaking with their heart or their minds and eyes. And, and the, the real truth is you just don't know until it's actual fight speed. There is a difference. And he's showing right now, no, there's no such thing as caged corrosion for Amazon. You see, even from that angle, you saw Storley's head pop back. He has taken damage every time he's trying to get inside. And yeah, you said he was going to try to stay on his feet, and he has, but at some point, He's getting lit up here. Yeah, right now he's getting the, the worst end of these exchanges. And it's a matter of sometimes how many punches are being thrown. Again, we talk about throwing in combinations. Look at what you're seeing out of Amazon. He's not just throwing ones. He's throwing ones, twos, threes. And those last ones are catching Logan. But you never know with equilibrium, and this has been a big first round for Amazon. 
He looks every bit the fighter he was when we last saw him. Logan might be changing his game plan coming up here because he better. <laughs> the wrestling is something that he knows he can go to, but you better go to it in time that you still have the ability to get in on. Those numbers almost don't even tell the story. Some of these have been big shots. Not only is Amazov winning the volume, he's winning the damage. He has damaged Story multiple times. Story has connected some, but no damage. Can you be too stubborn with a game plan? Yes, you can. There is no doubt about it. There's times, you know, when you go in and you've got your plan, and it's evident that, that plan was not well conceived, and it's time to go to plan B. Logan Storley's worst nightmare as he prepared for a fighter who hasn't been in the cage for this long. What if Amazon is better coming back? Well, you know, we talked to Amazon and he talked about the freedom of being in here because this is nothing now. Now he knows this is nothing compared to what he's been through. And he's showing it. Hey, dominant round one. off look good here nice left hand kind of stung it goes right after against notice multiples multiples work and that's what you're seeing from Amazon nice left hand again the left hand was the difference maker in this round that right hand is what hurt Logan Storley again the right hand lands but look at the volume look at how many look at all of those shots coming at him and that's what makes it difficult you could block the first one, maybe two, three, and you still, you can't block them all. And that's what we saw. Amosov has been back in Coconut Creek at AT&T AT -T for a while now. It's been several months, which Logan Storley was trying to kind of point out every time people were trying to tell the story. It's not as if Amosov hasn't been training. Hold up, hold up, behind the line for me. Man. Round two, guys. You can, you can feel the people in Ukraine that are able to watch this right now, John, you can feel it. Imagine the celebrations. And if the notion here, if the idea was to feel good and to be an inspiration, man, those first five minutes certainly served as that. Absolutely, and you're taking a look at, you know, that was a nice limp leg out by Logan Storley. But the fact that Amazov was the one that actually initiated a possible takedown attempt, he's trying to just tell Logan Storley, I'll go to this nice attempt by Logan and a beautiful counter by Amazov. That's what you need to do. Someone attempts that takedown, make them pay. The dominant welterweight world champion looks like he has not missed a beat. Beautiful feint right there by Amazon. He's getting Logan to lean. Logan doesn't want to lean. You got to bring your feet with you. Nice. That was that was very nice and clean by both. In the first seven and a half minutes here. And we're in the first fight. Amosov stuck the two early takedowns. Again, look at the volume. Yep. Not ones, not ones, twos. He's going with fives and sixes. Beautiful combination. Left got through. He's, he's really got Storley confused right now. Question for the Logan Storley campers, would they see the same guy that they saw 27 months ago? And so far, the answer is no. They're seeing one who's a lot better. Exactly. And it's, it's amazing to see, but you know, it was more of a wrestling-heavy attack you know, by both guys in the first fight. It has been 
mostly stand up, and it has been an absolute onslaught by Amazon. Even the shot Storley is landing, he's taken two or three just to land one. And an easy stuff, oh, yeah. easy stuff. And just the well done. Just well done by Amazon. I mean, it's just so smooth in how he transitions to the defense of his wrestling. Stopping a guy that we know, man, he's so good with his takedowns. Amosov is painting a masterpiece through eight minutes. Nice uppercut by Storley. And Storley needs to do that. He needs to get into that range where he can use some dirty boxing. That low cap. The you heard the sound of that kick. And look at the damage it's doing to yep. that calf. You can see it. Logan is doing nothing to check that at all. He's just eating it. Logan Storley's only blemish was the split decision loss to Amosov. And right now, they look like completely different levels, and now you can see the damage. Storley doesn't even look comfortable on the two feet now. Oh, no, and you see him switching stances, which is not good for Logan. By switching stances, Logan now has his normal foot that he shoots with. Is it not in position? He wants to be an orthodox stance, but that leg is taking some severe damage in this round. I mean, Storley has taken a lot of punishment here. He has. There's no doubt about that. He is in a position where he's absorbing, and you can, again, there comes that point where it just becomes too much. Your body starts to shut down. Your mind can be tough. First was a three-round fight, remember. This schedule for five, an emphasis on schedule. And these guys, this is a high pace. These guys are going. Nice move with my story to get himself out of range. Oh. Oh. Combinations. And that's the difference right now, Sean. These combinations, we talk about it all the time, about don't throw ones, just don't throw one, two. And Amazon is picture perfect in what he's doing as far as throwing combinations. Oh, nice, nice attempt by Logan Storley there. You heard the stories. Amosov looks unbelievable in camp. It's amazing. You wouldn't believe it. And I think a lot of people did. We should have. Take a look at what's happening here. That low calf kick right there. You can see the redness starting here. And back to it. Boom again. And that makes Logan Storley switch his stance to southpaw. That is not good for him. So he brings it right to the open body. Everything that Yaroslav Amazov is doing right now is just picture perfect. He is putting on a beautiful performance. And Logan Storley is trying to figure out what he can do to stop this. Having incredible corners, Bob Cook in Logan Storley's Mike Brown with Yaroslav Amazon. And Johnny Eblen almost brought to tears in that interview just now, talking about everything that Yaroslav Amazov has done. Just again, talking about how he has looked on the Coconut Creek. And man, I think they were underselling it. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> He didn't tell us enough, did he? No. It was so odd talking to him this week, and he just was so much on his mind. He seemed so happy to be here. Beautiful right hand landed by Amaz up there. Logan finally get in on that leg. He's got it. That he's trying to turn around, turn the corner, step over that. Amazov, knowing exactly where he's trying to go, you see that's why that hand goes inside. Lip need right out. Watching, tweeting, talking to Amanda, Johnny Eblen, been heaping the praise on his teammate, and deservedly so. Well, Logan Storley really showing a chin here because he has gotten hit by some big shots, body shots, and he's still hanging tough. There's Johnny Evelyn. Another left hand, right hand. You can 
see the damage. That is no lie. Another big shot gets through for Amazon. He's thrown in combinations. Getting multiple shots at the same time. He has hit that right kick to the body on Logan's story at least six, seven times now. It's going to have an effect. See, Logan Storley has got southpaw here. He just ate another left jab. So now Logan knows that in that first fight, he had Amazov in trouble in that third round. He got tired. And that's why he's trying to push the pace here. He's trying to push him into that, that place where he gets tired. I just don't know if he can do it from what's happening and, and, and the way that Amazov is looking. Amazov does not look tired at all. Oh, big yeah. left hook. Right on the chin. And that's what Logan Story talked about, the deep water, the fourth and fifth round. And it's natural to think when you had the guy tired and you were the better conditioned fighter the first time in the third round, you get to those later rounds. But I don't think anybody on Story's side could have imagined the punishment he would take in through the first two and a half just to get there. No, and we talked to Amazov about that, and he said, look, that camp was the worst camp of my life. I was dying trying to lose the weight to get to weight. He goes, I never felt so bad in a fight. So that was his story. And you know, I'm going to believe him because, boy, he looks different right now. Sean, I cannot tell you how much that hurt. And, and <laughs> Every time I watch, I'm like, oh, that hurt. Think of the crowd over which you are hearing those kicks. And take a look at these strike stats right now. And here comes some more. shots. Now into the takedown. And Amazon takes Storley down. Storley's trying to work his way back, but he knows that with Amazon having his hands clasped, he was going to get taken for a ride. So he's just taking his time, biding his time, waiting until he can get a hold of one of the hands, and you're going to see him stand up from that point. what that kick was this has been a clinic look I have been a believer of Yaroslav Amazov since the first time I watched him fight when he was going to come into Belgrade I said man this guy can fight and I've never seen him look this good 624 days away and that was off the dominant performance off one of the best fighters in Bellator history in Douglas Lima and I think we all got so caught up in the story, which is extraordinary, and we just forgot before it all started, this is one of the best fighters in the world. Well, there's a reason why he's got the best record in MMA, and he's proven it right now. He is the full package. He can fight everywhere. We don't have time to show you all those strikes on the stats we showed you. No, but we'll show you a little bit. Look at that nice right hand right there. Lands clean. It's not a very heavy shot, but it lands clean. Here comes the jab. Throws to the body, up to the chin. And look at the multitude. Boom, 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 boom. Just keeps on throwing. That body kick has landed how many times? Beautiful. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, that's the difference, Sean. It's amazing. And here's where he gets to the takedown. If anyone's going to bet, normally you're going to say Logan Story's going to be the guy getting the takedown. Johnny Evelyn sees the takedown and gets all excited. I don't understand why. He's, oh, wrestling. Got it. <laughs> We're talking about how Logan Storley has gotten dominated here. How many welterweights in the world would not be dominated against this performance right now? I'll tell you how what. How many would still be standing? Full marks right there. People better take note. You're looking at the best welterweight in the world right now. He can do it all. Oh. 
no quit and Logan Sterling still coming forward still going after him trying to figure out that one thing that he's going to see the open big shot Logan's hurt he has been hurt he was hurt in the first round this has been a remarkable gutsy performance and John even you are flinching at these shots now man you can hear him you can feel how hard Logan is getting hit at times it's like He's just, he's hanging in there, but man, you can only take so many. And you have been three feet away from some of the most devastating shots ever landed in this sport. No doubt. There you go. Another exit. exit. Make him pay. Oh, Beautiful. Goodness. At some point, you got to think about the damage that Logan Storley has taken here. At what point is this fight no longer winnable? When you talk about country tough coming from South Dakota, there is no doubt Logan Storley is just one tough individual because he has taken some big shots and he's still coming forward looking for that chance, looking for that moment. Not even close. Not even close. No, and so well done. Notice again, making him pay when he get, puts him out of position, holds him, Shoots the shot on him. Six failed takedown attempts for Storley. And they truthfully haven't been close. Sticking with the southpaw stance. This is as courageous a performance as you're going to see from Logan Stone. Oh my God! I mean, look, think about those numbers and that damage. I mean, it's amazing. He's taken 210. Strikes and, and hard ones, just like that. Even when he blocks it, yeah. You see, he's out trying to do the back elbow, a la Anderson Silva. Yeah. Anderson Silva landed that same strike on Tony Franklin knocking him out. This has been such a disciplined performance in addition to its dominance. Precision. Maybe the most shocking moment of the night. Logan Storley still on his feet through four rounds of this. Take a look here. Nice straight right hand. Jab, jab, 
There goes the kick, and you see it have what the effect it has. Logan cannot hold his balance based upon that leg is now damaged. And there comes the jab again. Simple, the simplest strike you can get, and it's doing damage. I don't know how many times Logan has been hit to the body with that kick, but tomorrow he is definitely going to be feeling it. All the work with Robbie Lawler, so confident coming in. He has every right in the world to be confident. Take yeah. a look at the people he trains with. He trains with some of the best people in the world. He knows how good he does against them. And then he comes in here and this happens. And it's like, what the heck is going on? It's just that Yaroslav Amazov is that good. Any semblance of a wrestling match that he envisioned has not come close to fruition. And Amazov has more takedowns in addition to everything else. Vision and eye in the first round with that cut. He took away the lead leg in the second round. Every time Storley's tried to get in close, he has paid a huge price. I think eight punch might be underselling it. Oh my. Clean right hand straight again. You see his stories had to get popped back. This is what he looks like after 624 days away. Yeah. Obviously, time means nothing to him. No. And most of you know the story. He will get a little time with his family when this fight is over, but he's going back to Ukraine to fight because that battle rages on. The one he is taking what he calls a vacation from. We talked about those athletes throughout the years that have taken time away in the middle of their careers to serve their country. I've never seen anyone that would be able to stop all of Logan Story's takedowns throughout a fight. And it's just amazing what I'm seeing out of Amazon. It almost seems silly to second guess such a one sided fight. But go back to the early rounds, and there was almost a stubbornness to Logan Storley, almost that the game plan was to wait until maybe the third or fourth round. Chase levels, and you realize now looking back, the only chance he had was to use his wrestling in the first round. And if he got stuffed, keep trying. But he stayed on his feet, and he paid a huge price. Well, and you, you look, and you look at some of his prior performances, and his stand up has really gotten way better. It's just he cannot stop the multitude of attack that Amazon is bringing in all of those combinations and the different angles he's bringing them at. There's no one that's going to give this guy trouble if he continues to fight this way. I mean, there's just more in the arsenal. That we haven't seen, and you're here in minute 24. You know, normally I don't want to see a fight go to a decision, but I'm looking at this, and Logan has put on such a great yes. fight. And I just want to see more of Amazon and what he's going to do next. It's just amazing to me. Amazon will be the story worldwide, and rightly so, because of his dominant performance. But here we are, 84, 83, 82 seconds away from the storm somehow surviving to make it to the end. There's definitely no quit Logan Storm. He has gone after Amazon with everything that he can in this fight. He's eaten some huge shots. So Logan Storley has nothing to feel bad about. He's given everything you can give.
Still throwing big shots late in the fight. We didn't know as he wrote this great story after two years away what it would look like when he returned. Would he be the same fighter he was? It turns out he wasn't. He was much, much better. A truly dominant clinic of a performance returning. One of inspiration from a dominant world champion at the top of his game. Victories for what that man has seen are relative. But if it means as much to him as you can tell from the look on his face, imagine what is going on in Ukraine right now with everybody watching this fight. It is exactly what they hoped it would be an inspirational performance. You said that right because you know you said I'm here to fight for those people to bring their spirits up. Well, their spirits aren't up after that performance. Uh, I don't know what to tell. Take a look at some of the action here. Storley looking for the takedown. Nice shot. He's, you see Storley actually just getting that one shot in here. The body shots over and over. That kick to the body happened. Storley doing everything he can to close distance. And then when he does, shot right to the chin. And then the, here comes all the volume. And it happened over and over again. One, two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Even when Storley landed, it was Amazon finishing it off with the better strikes. Just a brilliant performance. We've seen many flags in the cage over the years, but never seen one that meant more than the one that Yaroslav Amosov has behind him right now. And that you've seen strewn throughout this crowd. A flag that has been worn by people all over the world now draped over the shoulders of the world champion to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance in this world title fight, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Brian Miner, Sal Damata, Eric Colon. All three see it the same at 50 to 45. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Tears of joy, of relief, of grief, of so many different emotions for the world champion is with John Ladies McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the still Bellator welterweight champion, a man with a 27-0 record and the best welterweight fighter in the world. Yaroslav, what do you have to say to the Ukrainian people? Ukrainian people, I love you. I love you, my people. And. Uh, Please give me one minute, I want to say uh, <clears throat> one year, yesterday it start one year when crazy Putin start big war in my country. He want to kill uh, kids, every people who from Ukrainian. And uh, I want to say, I want to say, I want to thank you, thank you my Ukrainian army for defense my country. Thank you who helped my country. Please not forget what happening because today this crazy guy attack Ukrainian, but we don't know what he do tomorrow. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Yaroslav, you put on a brilliant performance against a 
a great fighter in Logan Storley, but this fight was completely different than your first. What was it that you were doing inside here that made you so successful tonight? Give me, please, translator. <laughs> uh, again, please. Who should, who should get it, the next shot at your title? Next opponent? I don't know. I think it's, we must uh, question Big Boss, Scott Cocker. And uh, I think he give next opponent. Yes? Sounds good to me. Anything you want to say to these Irish people here who came to cheer you on? Thank you. Thank you, Dublin. Thank you, Ukrainian. Thank you, our world. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the number one welterweight in the world, Yaroslav Amazon. It seemed impossible for this story to become even better, but Yaroslav Amosov defied the odds again and defied logic and defied everything we think we know by writing this latest chapter. An extraordinary fighter, but also an extraordinary human being. Inspiration in every sense of the word. Lightweight World Grand Prix is on. March 10th, eight of the division's best compete for a shot at a $1 million prize and the championship title. Kicking off the tournament, number two ranked Tofik Messiah boasting 16 knockouts in his 20 professional wins. Takes on power striker and proven finisher, fourth ranked Alexander Shapley. And the reigning champ, undefeated Usman Nurmagomedov, puts his kingship on the line against veteran lightweight Benson Henderson, who's craving the Bellator title and his just been fast tracked. Don't miss a second of the fight action on Friday, March 10th. We've had some unforgettable nights in this building, and this one will go to the top of the list. It began with Leonardo Sinise stepping up to face the undefeated prospect, Kieran Clark, and he was awfully impressive. Sinise went the distance, a theme we would see tonight, but Kieran Clark, very impressive going to 7-0. Sinead Cavanaugh waited four and a half years for her rematch with Janae Harding, landed some big shots, turned the fight around in round number two, and finally got her win back. Peter Quirley, a legendary walkout, but an elbow from Bryce Logan that just changed his career, knocking out Peter Quirley here in Dublin. And then Jeremy Kennedy staking his claim to a featherweight world title shot, dominating Pedro Carvalho. But all eyes around the world were on the main event. Logan Storley, it felt, had the world against him tonight, and then he had the best welterweight in the world against him, Yaroslav Amosov, to find the odds in a dominant return defending his title. For John McCarthy and Amanda Guerra, I'm Sean Brandy. Thanks.